Hi everyone and welcome to my updated UE Multishot Demon Hunter guide for season 27. So this is the set you're starting out with as a Demon Hunter because of the Hades Gift. I already made a guide talking about the Hades Gift and how to get it if you want to check that out. And Multishot is usually a very very good and fast higher torments like up to T16 farming build and also for low GRs. So it's very good to get started in a season because you can gear up very quickly with it. It's very simple to play and it uh, has like really nice mechanics that just makes it fast and smooth. And now in season 27 this build is actually massively buffed and changed in quite some degree where you can use this new strafe power that shoots the multi shots for you. So this works a little bit like the god demon hunter if you know it already where you usually shoot the hanging arrows and here you have the automatic multi shots going off towards the enemies. This makes the build way stronger than usual now it starts out on a rather low point, but you can see here this is 110 uh, going through this no problem. Uh, it's not on a tier of like the Impale Demon Hunter that you are um, going to play later, I guess, because uh, it's just weaker, but it works in a similar fashion. I also already made a guide for the Strafe Impale Demon Hunter that you want to transition to later and which uses the same seasonal theme power to Strafe and throw knives instead and this just goes higher tiers. It's very very strong, it's the speed farming meta basically of the season and something you want to transition to. Now with that said there is a big reason to play Unhowled Essence the entire season despite it being weaker than Impale and that's Torment 16. So traditionally Unhowled Essence was the T16 build until Gold Demon Hunter came around and then it was kind of tied between them but what you can see here now is basically God Demon Hunter with Multishot combined. So you can stack all the movement speed in the world and just stray through those rifts and everything gets wiped from you know, all over the place. So it's a very nice, fast, smooth T16 farming build. Probably one of the best builds for T16 that has ever existed in this game. So this is the main reason to play it, I believe, and it's gonna be super fun because of this insane AOE clear, which is definitely way above what we know for Demon Hunters. So I already updated the Maxwell guides for Season 27, including this Strafe variant here for the Multishot DH, and also have the planners here that I want to go through, so that you know a little bit of how this works. So I'm going to mostly focus on like the Speed variants and the T16 here, but there are Push and Bounties and Acme Nightmare variants as well, so you can also use it for all kinds of uh, game modes for with a small with different adjustments and the uh, concept is always the same. So we have the strafe power, this is from the angel crucibles that you get in season 27. You put it on an item, preferably something that is difficult to roll like the weapon, and then you get one out of three powers, in this case the strafe power. In addition to the unhold essence multi-shot set that gives you a massive damage buff for your multi-shot based on your current discipline, so you always want to keep that high, you also get the yang's v-curve, and the Deadlands Legacy, those are the two core multipliers for Multishot. So you get each time a 200% damage bonus and some other small effects. And this is already it in terms of like what you really need to get rolling. And typically you get a lot of resource cost reduction from the Yang's V-Curve, which synergizes well with the Captain Crimson. So this is included in some of those variants, but it's not necessarily required to get going. Or in T16, you have like way more damage than you really need and you can even drop that and go for all the movement speeds. So here's a 2016 version. So here, for example, there's Wadsaki and Arm Guards, which you have pretty much permanently, Crown Spells, Pride Spell, so you can spell smooth screen displacement all day long with all this resource cost reduction you have. So you want to try to roll that on various pieces. Good part is with this new strafe power, we can also use a Taeguk. So this is kind of like a novelty here as well, which uh, busts the build a little bit further. So we have Zays, you have Taeguk, and then for example for GRs you'd have the Trapped, in the 16 you have the Boon of the Hoarder, and uh, yeah, as you can see here this is like very optimized towards speed, with Hot Pursuit passive, Tactical Advantage, there's the Shadow Power, Shadow Glide, so this is another button you want to press as much as possible as long as you have Discipline, but we also refill it from Blood Vengeance and from Preparation itself. So you want to stack up maximum Discipline from the Skill, from the Chest, from the Weapon and Offhand, and you also want to keep your discipline high for the damage bonus. But with all this resource cost reduction rolled, if you have it on pretty much most pieces, you're going to be more than fine. In fact, you can even include something like the Accurate Fury here to go even faster. And while the attack speed doesn't actually really help us, 
it does give you a bit of move speed up to 25%. And we can just reset our cooldowns here with Zodiac Ring. So you don't actually need to have the Dawn, for example, in T16. You can swap a few things around. So for example, Dawn is used in like a solo speed version here. So we have consistent permanent vengeance without any issues when you have at least 37% cooldown reduction. Or in a solo push, there's also the Odyssey's end. So you can play this also a little bit like the Gold Demon Hunter. You just strafe and then shoot generators. And with this, you will automatically apply the Odyssey's end to basically all the enemies around you. And the motor shots will fire automatically, doing extra damage from the bow. Now, while you're strafing, you can also tap multi shot to do more shots. So you get like extra attacks that way. It's like a little bit more. So whenever you're not like moving around to like the next pack or something, but you're like fighting, let's say the boss or an elite pack, you can strafe and tap multi shot. But otherwise, you just like uh, strafe and tap and tang shot all the time. And this only has a two seconds duration. So at least in the push version with Odyssey's end, you kind of want to do that most of the time. But for example, for the speed version where there's no Odyssey's end, there's not really a reason to press evasive fire much besides proccing your bracers and your focus ring. So you can just tap multi shot whenever you want. So especially when you're starting out of the season, you get your Hades gift, which is usually quite easy to do as a demon hunter. If you have at least one of the two daggers from level one in the cube, like either the Lord Greenstone or the Lacales, you can usually complete GR20 quite easily. And then you have a full six piece set. So you start blasting with multi shot from that point. So I would probably just gamble quivers until you get the Deadman's Legacy and try to use whatever crafting materials you have to upgrade for a Yanks. And then you're basically set up for at least like Tom and 13 or higher, as long as you're uh, surviving. So maybe try to get a gold wrap early on. That might help a little bit with survival or just play it safe on like a difficulty where you basically one shot the entire screen. So it's more important to go fast, just like shoot at everything ahead of you. And you're going to be usually fine. Personally, I can't wait to blast at this. I'm a big fan of multi-shot in general. And while I typically like the stutter stepping, fast paced play style of the build, the smoothness of the T16 farming in particular is uh, hard to match in this game. So this is really something I'm looking forward to. And there are definitely some options to swap things around, especially in the T16 version. So if you feel a bit too squishy or you don't have the cooldown requirement and these kind of things, you can, for example, go with the Dawn and then you're going to be better off. So this might be something to uh, work towards later to include like all the movement speed there is. But it doesn't really take away much from the build itself. And that's it for this guide already. So hope you enjoyed it. I wish you good luck in Season 27 with your Demon Hunter. And I'll see you guys next time.